some fellow humans in Bristol have managed to invent a battery that can continuously give out power for over 5,000 years. 20 grams of this battery has the equivalent amount of energy of 50,000 AA batteries. And as you'd expect, the battery is made from diamonds. It's easy to make them at home too. Hack off some of the graphite from your local nuclear reactor core, vaporize it into atoms, and then collect the radioactive carbon-14 atoms and recrystallize them into dark colored diamonds. When I make mine, I usually encase the radioactive diamond in a non-radioactive diamond shell to reduce the radiation exposure to myself. I recommend you do the same. The key difficulty is sometimes just having a local nuclear reactor core around. Nobody wants them in the neighborhood anymore. Here's a piece of wood from the Red Forest. Not the reddest piece of wood in the world, more like a sort of gingery yellow color, but ultimately red because of the intense radiation it endured from the nearby Chernobyl reactor when it melted down in 1986. When this happened, it released an enormous radiation cloud that reached Ireland, and it set off radiation alarms in Sweden, 700 miles away. The intense radiation not only changed the color of the trees, and killed them, but also killed all of the microorganisms that might have been able to decompose the trees. So even though a lot of the red forest has been bulldozed and buried, there are still trees standing today that look like they did on the day that they died. Zombie trees unable to decompose. Of an afternoon, some scientists quite recently sent a robot into the Chernobyl reactor core to see what was what. And what they discovered was absolutely incredible. There is now a thick black mat of fungus growing thoroughly all over the reactor core, which has adapted to be able to feed off the radiation coming off the reactor. It doesn't need normal food. It doesn't need sunlight. It's just able to survive off the radiation. It uses melanin, which is the same chemical that gives our skin its color to convert the radiation energy into energy that it can use to live. Previous to growing all over the Chernobyl reactor core, this fungus spent most of its time chilling in bird poo. It has massively upped its game, and now it is more evolved than we are. So how does a nuclear reactor work? And how do things get so out of hand in Chernobyl? There are two main kinds of nuclear reaction. There's fission and there's fusion. And in this video, I'm just gonna talk about fission because I wanna save time to talk about the most radioactive man on the planet. To do fission, first you take a load of enormously heavy atoms, like uranium-235, and you fire high-speed neutrons at them. So let's think of the uranium-235 atoms as impossibly fat men who've just had an impossibly vast meal. And let's think of the high-speed neutrons as delicious, wafer-thin, after-dinner mints. When the fat men eat the mints, it's the final straw, and they explode, splitting into two fragments, releasing a huge amount of energy, and bizarrely, three more wafer-thin after-dinner mints. These wafer-thin after-dinner mints then fire off randomly in every direction, so if there aren't many enormously fat men who've just eaten an impossibly vast meal around, then the reaction will just stop. But if there are a lot around, a critical mass, then a chain reaction begins, and things can very quickly get out of hand. So why is this reaction releasing energy? It's because those two fragments and the delicious neutrons fired off somehow have less mass than the original uranium-235 that went in. The mass is literally disappearing, turning into energy. E equals mc squared. Now, there are nuclear reactions going on inside the sun, powering it, and the sun loses four million tons of mass every single second. The main difference between a nuclear warhead and a nuclear reactor is that the nuclear reactor has boron rods which absorb the excess after dinner mints so that the party can't get out of control. Now, what went wrong in Chernobyl was that they were reusing the boron rods way too many times and they were just becoming less and less effective until it was too late. About 70% of the world's electricity is generated by burning fossil fuels, which gives off carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases which are causing enormous climate change. The Arctic at the moment is a full 20 degrees warmer than it's supposed to be. The ice caps are melting, deserts are expanding, droughts are increasing, populations are starting to be displaced. These are massive problems 
and these are problems that nuclear power does not cause. Even though it may sound scary, it may be one of the best options that we have right now. Consider this. A single handful of coal can give us five megajoules of energy. A handful of uranium can give us 200 million megajoules. It would be fantastic if we could power the whole world with renewable sources of energy like solar and wind and hydroelectric. And we can, we will be able to. But the reality is that these technologies are just not advanced enough yet to power the whole world. We need something that works soon. Provided that nuclear power stations are constructed carefully and there are lots of safeguards in place and they are never built in geologically unsound areas like Fukushima was. Like it or not, they are one of the best methods of generating power that we currently have. Finally, a special feature for Naoto Matsumara, the most reactive man on Earth. He is the only remaining human in the exclusion zone around Fukushima, and he stayed behind to look after the animals. It is a statistical wonder that he is still alive. Thanks for watching, share the knowledge, and deliciously subscribe for more.